People come to us and they, I think they feel they're part of the Navy Museum. It's their museum and that's what we want to do. Well, the Navy Museum was established here in Simonstown in 1993. So we've been here for quite a long time. But before that the Navy had a maritime collection in the castle, the Castle of Good Hope, as well as in Martello Tower, which is a historical building here in Simonstown and for a short while in the 80s also at Fort Wynyard. But since 1993 we are here in Simonstown. In this building, which is one of the oldest buildings in Simonstown, this building that we're sitting in at the moment was the dockyard uh, mast house or sail loft and it was built by the Royal Navy, the British, in 1814-1815. So it's over 200 years old and that's what it was used for to repair the sails of sailing vessels back in the day. The museum's got certain functions and uh, this museum has got five basic functions. First of all, we're here to collect items. All the items that you see here was collected or donate, donated to, the pub, to, to this museum. Then we've got a function to restore items. So items that are not in a good condition must be restored and looked after. And then we've got an important function to re research. So once you have the item, then you need to know what is this all about. You need to research and find out what it's all about. Then we display. All the items you see here are on display. So we display the items. And then education is the last function, which is the, almost the most important function because we receive visitors that visit us. So that is education and schools and groups that visit us are an important part of that. So when you talk about the community, we offer all those services to the community of which I think education is the most important, not just for the outside community but also for the internally for the Navy members that visit the museum. So because it is a Navy museum, it is their museum. In 2005 the first African Chief of the Navy was appointed, Admiral Mudimu. He visited the museum and he was quite pleased with what he saw. He said it's a decent museum, it does have good displays, but he was a bit upset by the fact that the museum was not representative of the current Navy in terms of demographics. So the task was given to the museum to, to, to compile the history of transformation in the Navy and to put up a display on that. So that is how it came about that the new transformation display was um, put, put together and then opened in 2014 by Flag Officer Fleet at Mulhlana. And it tells the story of transformation and what happened after 1994 and displays 20 years of democracy. We've got a beautiful timeline that deals, tells the achievements of the Navy after 1994. So there's quite a few items that's on display there that are of significance, especially the, the items that we uh, got from admirals that served in Contui Sizue and Apple. It was quite an effort to get those uniform pieces and items that tell the story of the liberation struggle. So that are pr probably most unique in this museum. And then there's such a lot of technical items that are on display, such as our WASP helicopter, the Scarpion missile system, torpedoes. And when the school kids, and especially the boys, come in to visit, they are often wowed by all these um, items that are on display. But what was also significant is that during the research that we did was that we found that there was, although it was small, there was some 
instances of transformation before 1994. That's why we also tell the story of Cullets in the Navy that joined the Navy in the 1960s, even before that in, during the Second World War, served in the Navy. The way that women joined the Navy in the 1970s, the first time women could join the permanent force, the way that they evolved in terms of the more responsibilities that were given to them. So we tell that story as well. And if I may say, we've also taken ownership, the Navy's really taken ownership of some very unique pieces of history and heritage. For instance, the story of the SS Mendy. The story of SS Mendy is a unique one and we are probably one of the few museums in South Africa that display the story of Mendy. The Navy, as I said before, the Navy has taken ownership of this event. Last year, in 2018, we sent a ship, one of our Valor class frigates went across to the United Kingdom um, to commemorate the 100 years of the sinking of Mendy. Uh, in the display that we've got, we've got the only model of the SS Mendy that's on display. And we talk about the reason why the Navy renamed its ships. One of the ships was renamed SAS uh, Isaac Yoba. Isaac Yoba was a minister on board SS Mendy and during the sinking of Mendy he brought the men together and according to folklore and the story that goes he told the men on the deck of the sinking Mendy, calmed them down and told them we are here, we're going to die like brothers. So the Navy has taken ownership of that and named one of the ships SAS Isaac Yoba and then obviously when the frigates were delivered, the four frigates, the Navy decided to name one of those frigates SAS Mendy, also in honour of, of Mendy that sank now 101 years ago in the English Channel. The museum is open to the public and um, we open seven days a week from Monday to, Sat to Sunday, Monday to Sunday from 7, that's early, 9.30 in the morning until 15.30, half past three in the afternoon. One of the few museums that are open seven days a week. Uh, entry is free of charge, but you're welcome to make a donation to our museum fund. We have a museum fund, um, and we then utilize that fund to make improvements um, to the museum. Um, and it's just a unique experience. We get that feedback from people in the visitor, visitor's book where they write about the, how they experienced us and um, I think it's a unique experience, yes. Yeah, so you'll pick us up when you go to Facebook uh, under SA Naval Museum, not Navy, Naval Museum. We also have a, our own website, www.sanavymuseum.